I'm Jacob Muller with University of Kentucky Forestry Extension. Uh, today I'm out in the woods with uh, Bill Knott, who's Chief Forester for the Kentucky Division of Forestry. Uh, today we're going to hear from Bill uh, uh, what inspires him uh, uh, to be uh, a forester, some of the challenges that he faces and the solutions that he takes uh, to address those uh, challenges. Uh, so I hope you'll uh, tune in today for the next episode of Intrigued. Yeah, my name's Bill Knott. I'm a forester with Kentucky Division of Forestry. I work at a, the Moorhead Branch office. I've, I've been with the Division of Forestry now for uh, about 18 and a half years. Uh, I started uh, back in early 2003. I worked out of the Eastern District out of Betsy Lane. I was on the uh, forest inventory crew. I first started thinking about forestry back, uh, it was probably about my junior year in high school. And a lot of that, those thoughts, you know, about being a forester, uh, I knew I wanted to be in the outdoors as a career. You know, I, I grew up in a rural area in southern Indiana and spent pretty much all my free time uh, outdoors, either hunting, you know, fishing, hiking, camping, uh, gardening. I mean, I just anything outdoors I absolutely loved. And you know, did that from an early age on, from basically the time I could walk. Uh, you know, I, I spent a ton of time in the outdoors. Uh, luckily, where I grew up at, it, it was just a stone's throw from the Hoosier National Forest, so uh, that was sort of my stomping ground growing up. Uh, and that's what really developed my passion for the outdoors. And uh, you know, about my junior year of high school, working with the the high school counselors, you know, trying to decide what direction I wanted to, to take my life. Uh, uh, you know, every little you know questionnaire I'd go through, it kept steering me towards some outdoor career. So uh, for me, that's where I kind of decided that forestry was the route I wanted to go. And at the time, to me, you know, a forester at that time was, you know, I was gonna go to college, become a forester, and I was gonna end up in, you know, Yosemite or Yellowstone National Park giving tour guides or something, you know, in, in the outdoors. I had no idea of the depth of forestry, you know, how many different uh, jobs and career paths there are within forestry. I think one of the things that, that excites me the most is, you know, number one, working with the private landowners, you know, the the, the programs we offer, uh, you know, are through our stewardship program, uh, you know, that allows any landowner to sign up uh, for a stewardship plan. You know, that that means first of all they're they're interested in, hey, what what do I have in my woods? And so, so that excites me. It gives me the opportunity to go out in their forest and, and you know, work with that landowner and, and provide them information on you know their current conditions of their woodland and ultimately you know once we get that stewardship plan written uh, it allows us to you know hopefully take that an, another step further and start some active management uh, to hopefully improve the forest and you know help them you know reach their management objectives and, and also you know looking forward you know into the future, uh, you know, because a lot of the activities we're doing in the woods, I mean, we're not going to see end results of some of this stuff for another 50, maybe 100 years down the road. So, uh, you know, that, that's probably what excites me the most is just, you know, working with those different private landowners, uh, you know, inform them of what kind of shape their woods is, is in right now, and then hopefully, you know, getting them to take that next step and start actively manage, managing the woods and uh, you know see those steps followed through and, and see how the forest changes over time. You know, we're not only doing this for the current generation, we're, we're improving the woods for future generations. Because I mean, we all know our, our forests are an important, vital natural resource that we have and you know, we've got to take care of them. We can't just keep coming and taking, you know, the good timber every so often and then just, you know, leave all the, the junk trees and the invasive species behind. We have to, 
you know, get out there and actively manage and take care of our forests so those, you know, future generations uh, down the road are, are going to have something to work with as well. Yeah, I think one of the challenges we have is, you know, there, there's so many landowners out there that, that you know, they're, they're just not aware of, of all the services available to them to help manage their forest land. You know, because it's not only Division of Forestry, you know, it's also folks like, you know, UK Forestry Extension, you know, putting all the educational material out there. Uh, the USDA, you know, the, the Natural Resource Conservation Service offices that are offering funding to help do improvement work out there on properties. So, uh, you know, I, I've always, you know, stressed the importance uh, to the other foresters that I work with that, you know, educating the public on what all is available out there to help them manage their, their forest land. That's, that's a, you know, crucial step in going forward. And with the experience I've had working with Division of Forestry, I've been on enough landowners' properties and seen enough areas uh, that have been harvested for timber. And you know, you go back into them after they've been harvested. You know, maybe a consultant forester marked them and sold the timber. Maybe KDF marked and, and you know, landowner sold the timber. Uh, there, there's great potential out there. Uh, you know, for that proper management, uh, and yeah, initially it, it's it's going to look kind of rough. You know, anytime you you go in and, and cut a few trees, it's going to punch holes in the canopy. There's going to be light. There's going to be some treetops laying around. Uh, you know, maybe maybe some uh, you know muddy uh, skid trails and that sort of thing. But but the forests we have, they're very resilient. I mean, they heal up very fast. Uh, they they regenerate very well. And that's that's one thing, you know. Like I said, through experience and, and all the places I've I've seen throughout Kentucky, uh, you know, I, I can I can relay those experiences to other landowners. Say, hey, you know, maybe it is time to go ahead and and, and plan a harvest for your woods, because otherwise, you know, these mature oaks, uh, you know, some of them already started dying. Some of them are, are you know getting tossed over by the wind. Uh, and they're just going to kind of lay there and, and deteriorate over time, and so you're losing a lot of value there. Uh, whereas if you if you planned out uh, some intermediate harvest, uh, you can go ahead and take advantage and you know uh, take those out of the woods and essentially make room uh, for the next generation of trees uh, that are going to grow in those mature trees' place. Yeah, so. Another major challenge we face as foresters, uh, you know, is the threat, the forest health threat from non-native invasive plant species. I mean, nearly every landowner that we work with, you know, we're going to find some uh, invasive plant out there, and, and to, to different, you know, levels of infestation. You know, some areas it may just be getting started, and other. Other locations, uh, you know, they may have just an understory in their woods that's just a thicket of bush honeysuckle. Uh, so, so those certainly pose a, a major challenge, uh, you know, when ultimately the landowners wanting to manage their native trees and, and you know, grow a healthy forest. Uh, you know, so as we're doing, you know, the initial steps in writing that forest stewardship plan. That's one of the main things we look for uh, is is the presence of invasive plant species, and uh, you know, anytime we find those, we, we always want to mention that to the landowner. Say, hey, you know, you you've got you know these native trees on your place, but you've also got you know these non-native invasive plants, and it could be you know tree of heaven, uh, it could be bush honeysuckle, uh, it could be kudzu. Uh, oriental bittersweet. Uh, there, there's a whole list of different invasives that uh, can be very problematic uh, if they're not uh, addressed, and uh, you know if, if plans aren't made to, to take action to, to knock those back. Uh, so, so that's one thing we really try to encourage. You know, once the plan is written and, and we found you know these invasive plant species. And we try to steer those landowners in the right direction. Hey, let's let's do some herbicide treatments or some sort of treatments to knock back 
uh, these invasive plants, uh, once you kind of get a grip and a handle on those invasive plants, then you can start focusing on you know, your forest management, managing the native stuff that's there. You know, what I find most rewarding is, you know, of course, working with that private landowner and, you know, getting them that stewardship plan and seeing them take those steps, whether it be a timber harvest or timber stand improvement, and then, you know, working with them over the, and just to see how the forest changes over time. And, you know, you see that it's, it's going the direction that they want it to go. Uh, and, and just seeing that uh, you know that active management works, uh, that's that's what we really like to see. I mean, you can write as many stewardship plans as you want, but until the landowner takes those next steps and starts actively doing the management, uh, you know that that's that's what I really enjoy seeing is is you know those actively managed forests uh, to you know gradually improve them over time, and and as I've said earlier. Uh, to help you know, improve the forest for the future.